Hi, I'm Dr. Tom Kravis, Physician Executive for 3M Consulting Services. Thank you for joining me. Today we're going to talk about ICD-10 documentation for hematology and oncology. There are some changes you will need to make in your documentation to support ICD-10, but there are instances of documentation that remain the same. So let's get started. We'll guide you through this and help you infuse your documentation with ICD-10 ready terminology. I know you are busy in your clinical practice, so I will briefly summarize the key takeaways. In your documentation of patient care, consider the use of adjectives. Link the cause and effect of each condition. Be specific about aspects of a disease and each anatomical site and use exact dates when appropriate. A little more on each of these. Differentiate in your notes whether or not a condition is acute, chronic, or acute on chronic whenever appropriate. For example, write acute on chronic graft versus host disease instead of graft versus host disease. Use due to or secondary to to indicate cause and effect and to record all conditions the patient may have such as aplastic anemia due to chemotherapy or agranulocytosis due to procanamide. Think about the most current terminology to describe a condition or different aspects of the disease. For example, acute myeloid leukemia with 11Q23 abnormality or acute myeloid leukemia with multilineage dysplasia. Precisely designate anatomical site, such as intraductal carcinoma in situ of left breast, malignant neoplasm of middle third of esophagus, or metastatic carcinoma of right lower lobe of lung. Detail the patient's cancer neoplastic status. Document the type of neoplasm, such as carcinoma in situ or lymphoblastic lymphoma, and whether it is a primary or secondary or metastatic malignancy when appropriate. As mentioned earlier, it is also important to document the location or locations of all malignant lesions. Indicate for each malignancy and location whether the patient currently has a malignancy or whether it has been eradicated, treated, or is no longer present. For leukemias and lymphomas, it is important to document if the patient is in remission or relapse or has never achieved remission. Documenting history of colon cancer two months ago makes it difficult for the coding professional to ascertain the patient's status and assign an accurate code, which in turn may inaccurately reflect the severity of illness or risk of mortality of your patient. Ask yourself, what else could I add in my notes about this patient's condition that would better communicate how sick the patient is, which in turn better communicates the resources needed for patient care? Incorporating these aspects into your documentation will result in an accurate picture of your patient's severity of illness and risk of mortality. This in turn will result in accurate public reporting on quality and outcomes. And it will help reduce the number of queries you receive to clarify your documentation. In the upcoming slides, we'll take a look at some diseases and procedures that have new documentation requirements under ICD-10. In ICD-10, there is a feature called laterality for right, left, and bilateral, which is found in many diagnoses and procedure codes involving paired organs or those codes specific to one side of the body versus the other. For example, acute left otitis media. ICD-9 has a limited number of these. ICD-10 has many more. This feature of ICD-10 by itself 
is responsible for a substantial increase in the number of codes which you have probably heard so much about. Since you usually include this information in your patient care notes, additional documentation will typically not be needed. So for your information, if you happen to omit laterality when needed, it may result in a query. Suffice it to say, laterality is included when appropriate for some conditions you may treat. For example, renal cell carcinoma of left kidney. So do a quick double check of your notes to be sure you included it before signing off. We'll try not to belabor this point in the upcoming slides. New in ICD-10 is the ability to identify specific types of nutritional deficiency anemias. In ICD-9, different types of anemia were grouped under a generic code such as folate deficiency anemias. As you can see on screen, there are specific codes for the different types of iron, vitamin B12, folate, and other nutritional deficiency anemias such as vitamin B12 deficiency anemia due to selective vitamin B12 malabsorption with proteinuria or drug-induced folate deficiency anemia. Therefore, it's important to detail the specific type of deficiency anemia in your notes. Remember that the coding professional cannot use and or interpret laboratory results. Let's say an iron level or transferrin results to assign a code for iron deficiency anemia. They are reliant on your documentation of the diagnosis to assign a code. What's new? ICD-10 provides combination codes that identify the sickle cell disease in crisis and some of the associated manifestations of crisis, specifically acute chest syndrome and splenic sequestration. In ICD-9, two separate codes were required. One, to capture the sickle cell crisis and the other to capture the manifestation. There is currently an opportunity for improvement in documenting this diagnosis by recording the specific type of sickle cell disease. Hemoglobin SS disease accounts for 60 to 70% of sickle cell cases in the United States. However, when I look at charts, I almost always see the terms sickle cell anemia or sickle cell disease documented. These nonspecific terms default to the code for hemoglobin SS1 disease. It is important from medical, research, and statistical perspectives to classify the patient's sickle cell disease as accurately as possible. ICD-10 provides a few more codes than ICD-9 does to identify drug-induced blood disorders such as anemia, pancytopenia, and agranulocytosis. For example, there is now a code for drug-induced aplastic anemia. Such a code did not exist in ICD-9. The important thing to remember here is that you must indicate cause and effect in your documentation. For example, agranulocytosis due to sulfasalazine or pancytopenia due to chemotherapy. Be sure to name the drug or drugs that induced the condition. Some of the codes further specify that the drug-induced disorder was caused by chemotherapeutics and antineoplastic drugs. There's nothing new with blood loss anemia in ICD-10. It is still classified as anemia due to acute or chronic blood loss. There is, however, an opportunity for improvement in documenting this diagnosis. If the anemia is due to blood loss, you need to be certain you indicate the cause and effect in your documentation.
We see here in this example of medical record documentation, the final diagnoses of a patient who was admitted to the hospital with abdominal cramping and rectal bleeding. The patient was found to have diverticulosis with acute hemorrhage, anemia, and received a transfusion of packed red blood cells. Improved documentation for ICD-10 links the anemia to the acute blood loss. Again, there is nothing new in ICD-10 for anemia of chronic disease. As you can see on screen, it is still classified the same. That is, anemia due to chronic kidney disease, neoplastic disease, as well as a generic category for other chronic diseases. Make certain to document the chronic disease and link it to the anemia when appropriate. ICD-10 has greater specificity for anatomical site and usually requires documentation of laterality for paired organs. Be sure your documentation is as specific as possible when identifying anatomic site. Unchanged from ICD-9 is the classification of malignancies as primary or secondary, which is a particularly problematic area of documentation for coders. Often, primary or secondary sites of a malignancy are not specified, and in the case of secondary malignancies, whether the primary site is still present. A statement of history of can be ambiguous and may prompt a query. For example, appropriate documentation of a malignancy would be metastatic cancer to right lower lobe of lung from breast. Patient had left mastectomy one year ago. This documentation clearly identifies the primary and secondary sites and states the primary site is no longer present, all of which are factors considered in code assignment. What's new here is that there has been an explosion of new categories and codes for malignancies of lymphoid, hematopoietic, and related tissues. There are additions to this section, as well as changes in the names of some of the malignancies in order to reflect current medical knowledge and the diagnostic terms for these disorders. You can compare the changes in the categories of these malignancies between ICD-9 and ICD-10 on screen. We won't review all of the new terminology associated with these disorders at this time because they are quite numerous. On screen, you can see the documentation requirements and options for one type of leukemia, lymphoid leukemia. The leukemia must be specified as acute or chronic. The remission relapse status must also be recorded. Then the specific type of leukemia must be documented such as acute lymphoblastic or adult T cell to name just a few. Your documentation will be key in order to assign accurate codes for these complex diagnoses. I would like to direct your attention to the physician documentation pocket card associated with this module. The new terminology associated with all of these malignancies is detailed there. You can access the pocket card after you have completed this module. What else is new here is that the remission relapse status of myelomas, leukemias, and plasma cell neoplasms have been incorporated into the code at the fifth character. For example, the character of two in code C91.12 identifies chronic lymphocytic leukemia of B cell type in relapse. You will have to make certain that the patient's remission relapse status is clearly indicated in your documentation as either not having achieved remission, in remission, or in relapse. This is especially important to clarify or restate the patient's current status from visit to visit. 
In addition to ensuring that the correct code is assigned, remission relapse status is used as a predictor for long-term survival and provides important information when analyzing the efficacy of treatment. As physicians are increasingly held accountable for patient outcomes, a huge concern is how to classify the patient who fails to follow a recommended regimen of care and gets sicker as a result. Under ICD-9, there is only one generic code for such a patient that says non-compliance and no additional detail as to why the patient didn't follow your instructions. But in ICD-10, there are several codes to describe why a patient is non-compliant in taking drugs prescribed by you. This new clinical terminology is drug underdosing. Underdosing identifies situation in which your patient has taken less of a medication than prescribed by you, either unintentionally or intentionally. Document in your notes why the patient isn't taking the correct amount of their medication and the associated condition. For example, patient was admitted due to severe neutropenia. It was discovered that the patient did not fill her prescription for Nupogen due to financial hardship. We'll take a look at a procedure that would be performed on the hematology oncology service to give you some exposure to ICD-10 PCS codes and associated documentation requirements. Here you see the table the coder will use to construct the code for the administration of an anti-neoplastic substance. Note the column on the left labeled body system region. The coding professional will need to determine from chart documentation whether the substance was infused via a peripheral or central artery. In addition, looking at the column entitled Approach, the coder will need to determine if the artery or vein was accessed percutaneously or via cutdown. One of the values in the column on the right labeled Qualifier will be selected to identify the anti-neoplastic infused, for example, high-dose interleukin-2. For example, if documentation indicated that a monoclonal antibody was administered percutaneously through a peripheral artery, the PCS code would be 3E0530M. ICD-10 requires more detailed descriptions in your documentation of anatomical site and aspects of a disease, condition, procedure, and circumstances of patient encounters. The information generated from ICD-10 codes will result in a more accurate picture of your patients, their severity of illness, risk of mortality, and the services rendered. This in turn will result in accurate public reporting on quality and outcomes. Should you have questions about documentation for a particular diagnosis or procedure, your hospital's clinical documentation improvement specialist should be your first stop. The coding staff in your health information management department is a valuable resource as well. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.